Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about a GM, which is an example of a group scheme. And um, along with it, uh, some general ways on how to think about group schemes. Um, and this is meant to be sort of a precursor to a video that I want to do on uh, motivating the project construction um, by group actions. And uh, I, there was a lot of stuff to say just about the a group scheme GM itself, so I want to make another video on it. Okay. So um, first, what is a group scheme? So there are a lot of equivalent ways to define it, but I think um, the definition that I like, which um, sort of gets the essence of it, uh, is that it is a scheme uh, that represents, and that's the important part, um, a functor uh, from schemes to groups. So I'll sort of say a bit more explicitly about what this means in a bit. Um, but we have a bunch of examples of uh, sort of representing objects in uh, topology and a little bit in algebra geometry as well. Um, for example, in topology, we have all these spaces RP infinity, BP infinity, uh, B O, B U, B G in general, I guess, and uh, the script M G. It sort of classifies uh, different things. So this corresponds to uh, real lines. This corresponds to complex lines. This corresponds to like uh, real vector bundles, complex vector bundles, or real and complex K theory. This corresponds to G bundles, and this corresponds to genus G um, curves. And uh, the thing about uh, all these spaces which make them canonical and useful uh, is that they satisfy this property that um, maps from some topological space x into any of these uh, is a one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, some functor uh, acting on x. So this functor says okay give me some topological space x and I'll give you some data about x. So RP if you take maps from x into rp infinity then it'll be measuring um, the uh, set of real line bundles over x TP infinity complex line bundles, BO will be like uh, real vector bundles up to stabilization, um, and similarly for these guys. And so what this means is that uh, this is some topological space which represents this functor um, in the sense that you can recover the functor by looking at maps from uh, X into uh, the space. Um, and one example in algebraic geometry that I know of is if you take PN, then um, maps from x to pn um, give you the data of a line bundle um, over x with some sections. So that is to say that a map from x to pn is exactly equivalent to the data of a line bundle over x uh, with some sections over that line bundle. And a group scheme uh, I claim is uh, sort of falls into this category where uh, you have some group scheme G, and you have that maps um, from some space X to G uh, is gives you some group um, associated uh, to G, uh, sorry, to the space X. Um, and so in this example, I'll be uh, looking at GM. And so uh, specifically what will happen is that we'll see that maps from spec A to this group scheme, whatever it is, GM will be in one-to-one -one correspondence with um, the set of units of A. And this is A cross. Um, so a lot of these guys, um, or for, first, I guess I should say, uh, one way to think about this is um, that if you have something like RP infinity, then over RP infinity, you have some tautological line bundle. And so that if you have any space X mapping to this, then if this is a map F, you can uh, pull back the line bundle to get some line bundle F star L um, lying over X, uh, which is the pullback of this line universal line bundle. And this is uh, essentially how the correspondence goes. So the way that I like to think about group schemes is that you have uh, some scheme G. Um, so in our case, we'll be working with GM. 
and over here you have some sort of like universal group and so this is like some set and then if you have a map from another scheme to a g which is f then like i don't know I, I guess i'll call this something like u then you can like sort of uh pull back this universal thing f star u um and sort of do that i guess this can be made explicit using unitas limit or something um but the main thing that i want to say about this is like if you think of um this group of units as being like some sort of a universal thing which lies over g in some sense and you can pull that back to x um, if you have a map from x into your space and so that's a nice way to um, think about group schemes um, so now uh, you'll notice that i said that uh, a lot of these guys are um, functors from topological spaces to sets right you take a topological space and you get a set of line bundles over it or you take a topological space and you get the set of g bundles over it. Um, but over here, um, I'm saying that this should be a functor from schemes, which are like the analog of topological spaces, uh, to groups, not just sets. And a priori, this guy is just a set. Um, or I should say that this guy um, is just a set, but this guy on the right is a group. So how can we sort of enhance this set over here to make this into a group? And so that's where the axioms of a group scheme come in. And that is that uh, we have three different uh, maps associated to group scheme. Uh, the first map is a map GM cross GM to GM. And this I'll call a multiplication map. Um, the second map is a map from GM to GM. And here I'll call this the inverse map. And then um, these sort of correspond to the axioms of a group, right? You have some multiplication on a group and you have an inverse of a group. Um, but uh, another thing that you have in a group is an identity. And so an identity element um, is like a, an element of your group. Uh, but how do we def uh, explicitly write an element of a scheme? Well, a point of a scheme is a map from spec of a field to a scheme because a spec of a field is topologically a single point. And so if we want to talk about a spec of a scheme, then we should uh, talk about a map from um, a, a field to uh, the scheme. So uh, going forward, I'll be working in schemes over spec K. Um, so that means is that schemes which are defined by K algebras and uh, not just general rings. Um, and in this scenario, the unit map will be a map from spec k to g m. So this is all called the unit. And what you should think about is that this um, uniquely identifies uh, some, or uniquely picks out some point in here, um, which will act as a unit in some sense that we'll see in a bit. And so um, I should also say that when we take Spark over here, um, we should take it over spec k. And if instead you're working with like schemes over some fixed scheme y, then the Spark should be taken over um, the scheme y. And then the unit map would be a map from y to gm. Um, I'll mention a little bit about that later. Um, but how do these maps uh, relate to uh, this set over here? Um, well, they almost look like uh, what do you have for a regular group? So if you have a regular group, then these maps allow you to multiply points of a regular group and uh, uh, so you get another element of your group back. But uh, the thing is not so true for schemes. So I'll say, and I'll expand on this later, but for now, GM, uh, again, working in schemes over spec K, uh, is defined to be spec of K x comma x inverse. Um, so this topologically will look like sort of uh, the punctured line, right? So it'll be um, a1 minus 0, uh, where the 0 is really the ideal x. Um, so seemingly, like, these maps should be something so that if you take x minus a times x minus b in some appropriate sense, then you should get uh, the ideal x minus a, b. Uh, which is uh, fine and good, but uh, when you start talking about generic points, then it starts to get a bit awkward because 
how should we multiply the ideal 0 times the ideal x minus a? Then this is some weird thing. Um, so what I want to say is that this is, this is not the right way to think about group schemes. It, it, you shouldn't think about it as like you can multiply um, the underlying points of a scheme. Instead, uh, you should multiply points in the set sense of a functor of points. So in other words, if we have um, two maps uh, from, say, uh, spec L, where L is another field, let's say, um, if we have two maps to GM, um, then we get an associate map um, to GM cross GM just by universal properties. And so we have a map from spec L to uh, GM cross GM. And then using this multiplication map, um, which I'll call M, we get a map down to GM. OK, so uh, what should this mean? Well, I claim that uh, this should be one-to-one -one correspondence with the units. And we'll see why that is later. But for now, I'll just say that this should correspond to some unit U, and this should correspond to some unit V. And then this composite map should correspond to some unit U times V. Um, and this will be in L cross, in L cross, and this will be the product in L cross. OK. Um, and then similarly, for the inverse map, uh, what we have is we have some map uh, spec L to GM. We have a map from GM to GM. Uh, so let's say that this corresponds to some unit U. Um, and then I'll call this inverse map iota. Um, if we compose this with iota, then we should get uh, some other map from spec L to GM, so another element of the set, and this should correspond to the unit U inverse. Okay, and then uh, the third thing we have is this um, <clears throat> unit map, and I'll call this uh, E. And since uh, we're working in the setting of schemes over spec K, we have a, a unique structure map from spec L to spec K. And if we take the composite of this with um, the unit or identity map to GM, then this corresponds to um, a special map from spec L to GM. And I claim that this should correspond to the unit 1. OK, so what does this mean? Um, that means that uh, these three structure maps, which are used to uh, make the scheme into a group scheme, um, should, it can allow us to like take old maps uh, inside the set and produce new maps. So um, this one allows us to take one map corresponding to some unit u, in a sense that we'll see shortly, and get a new map which corresponds to the unit u inverse. This allows us to take two maps which correspond to two different units and allow us to get a map which is part of the units. And then this map um, allows us to say that like the set is non-empty. In particular, it contains some special uh, map which corresponds to the unit 1. OK, so what that means is that um, the, the, the underlying set of the scheme itself is not a group. But if you take maps from another scheme, and, and like this L doesn't really have to be a field. The L can be any algebra. In fact, X can be any scheme, and like all of this will still hold. Um, if you take the maps from some scheme into GM, then uh, this will um, give you a group. So it's, it's not the underlying set of GM itself that's a group, but it's um, this uh, set of maps which forms a group. OK, so let's work out the explicit example over here and see what these three maps have to be um, just by sort of following our nose. OK, so let's say that we have uh, some k algebra A, um, and we have some uh, scheme x, which is spec A. And we want to define a map from this guy to the GM. So this will correspond to a map from k adjoin x comma x inverse to a. Um, now, since a is a k algebra, the map from k to a will be uniquely determined because you have to set one to one and be k linear. Um, so all that's left to do is specify what x gets into. So let's say that this is some map f. So f of x must get sent to some element a. And then we can argue that, OK, f of x inverse times f of x should um, be f 
of x inverse times x, which is f of 1, which is 1, which means that if we specify that f of x has to be sent to a, then f of x inverse has to be sent to a inverse. And so what that means is that this actually puts a restriction on what we can put on the image of x. We can't just choose uh, any element a. We have to choose an element of a which is already invertible um, in the ring a. And so what that means is that um, we, the image of the element x has to be a unit. Um, and similarly, you can convince yourself that conversely, if you have a unit of this ring A, then that uniquely defines a map from uh, this algebra to A. So what we see then is that the units of A are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the set of ring homomorphisms uh, as K algebras from K X, X inverse to A, um, which is also just a set of maps from spec A to GM. Um, and the correspondence here is that A, or I guess I'll call the unit U, uh, corresponds to the map which sends X to U. And so that's uh, what I mean over here when I say that, okay, this map should correspond to some unit U, this map should correspond to some unit V, um, and we'll see that the product should correspond to UV and similar for the rest of these guys. Um, and so we see that we sort of attained our goal of like having uh, some scheme, GM, so that maps from spec A to GM uh, as a set are equal to the set of units of A. Now let's see what these maps should be so that we can enrich this set um, in order to become a group. Okay, so maybe we can start with the inverse map because I think that's probably the clearest. Uh, so the inverse map, iota, um, should send, uh, I'll, I'll call this ring uh, R for convenience, uh, just so I don't have to keep writing it out all the time. This should send R to R. And what I'll do is I'll send X to X inverse. Okay, so let's say that we have uh, some unit U, um, which is a map from R to A which sends x to the element u. Then if we pre-compose with iota, what will happen is that x gets sent to x inverse, which gets sent to u inverse. So we see that this composite map, which corresponds to this composite map that I wrote down here, um, sends uh, the map from r to a corresponding to u to the map from r to a corresponding to u inverse. So we see that if we have a map corresponding to the unit u, then we have a map corresponding to unit u inverse. In other words, we've enriched this set um, with some involution, um, which will swap um, uh, pairs of maps uh, based on whether they correspond to inverse elements of each other. Cool. Um, so now we can look at the unit, for example. Um, what we want is uh, for the unit, I'll call this map epsilon instead of E because uh, this is usually called a co-unit map, whatever. Um, and this should be a map from R to K, which will be uh, essentially uh, correspond to a map from spec K to GM. And what this will do is I'll say that this should send X to the element one. And so what this allows us to do is, um, since we're working with spec K, I said that any scheme has a unique map down to spec K, and that's uh, determined by the unique map from k to a, which um, sends one to one and extends by k linearity. And then if we send r to this, and we look at what the image of x is, well, the image of x over here is one under the map epsilon. And uh, the image of one over here is one. And so that means is that we have a map from r to a, I, this should be big A, um, inside uh, this guy, uh, which corresponds to the unit element one. So not only do we have an evolution here, which corresponds to inverses, we also have a unit element one. So the last thing we need to do is talk about this multiplication map. So this multiplication map should be some map M, which goes from GM cross GM to GM. So in other words, it will correspond to a map from R to R tensor over K of R, okay? So um, what should this correspond to? Um, well, uh, let's say that we have two maps from R to A. 
which correspond to the units u and v. So in other words, x gets sent to u, and here x gets sent to b. But for uh, notational reasons, which will become clear in a moment, I'll instead uh, replace this copy of r um, with being k adjoin y comma y inverse. Okay, uh, I mean, it's the same ring, it's just I'm calling it something else. Um, and this will induce a map from r tensor over k r, because we're working over k here, um, to the ring A. And what is this ring? Well, it's k adjoin x, x inverse, y, y inverse. Okay? Um, and so uh, what we want is that if we take the map from r to r tensor over k r to uh, this composite map, which I guess I'll call u comma v, to the algebra A, then this should send x to u times v. Okay, so you can verify that if we send x to x tensor y over here, um, where we write our tensor over k r as this, then uh, this will get sent to u times v. Why? Because x will get sent to u, y will get sent to v. And then this map is essentially determined by, um, if you have a pure tensor like this, multiply the two elements together. Um, so maybe this multiplication map is a bit too straightforward to actually see what multiplication maps look like in general. So I want to uh, give another example of a multiplication map, uh, or of all these maps, and that's another group scheme, which is GA. So GM corresponds to like the multiplicative group. GA similarly corresponds to the additive group. Um, and so this will be defined as spec of k adjoin x. And so I claim that um, A with the underlying additive group structure, so forgetting the multiplication, um, this is a one-to-one -one correspondence with the set of maps from x to or uh, spec A to G A, which is a one-to-one -one correspondence with maps from k adjoin x to a. And why is this equality true? Well, this equality is true because, again, uh, k maps uniquely to a. And so to extend this map, we essentially need to uh, have an element of x mapping to here. Um, and there's no longer any restriction on what x can map to, so x can map to any element of a. Um, so we have found that these two are bijective as sets. And uh, in order to make this set into a group, we can, again, define some nice little maps over here. So the inverse map should, um, I'll call this ring r prime now, should send r prime to r prime, which will send x to minus x. And so then you can verify that if x gets sent to some element a, then the precomposing with this will send x to minus a. Uh, similarly, the co-unit map, which will induce the unit or identity element over here, which will be a map from r to k, or r prime to k, will send x to the element 0. Um, and so, okay, yes, to say, why, why should this uh, send x to the element 1? Well, these maps can't be just arbitrary maps. They have to satisfy compatibility conditions, uh, which is to say that the unit acts like the unit and implications associative inverses act like inverses and whatnot. You can search for the definition of a group scheme if you want for the um, actual uh, compatibility between them. But uh, essentially what this says is that because x is sent to 1 um, and the way that we define a multiplication map, um, if we replace, uh, say, this map over here, uh, with this special map uh, 1, then the composite should just be this bottom map. So if we replace v with 1, then we should just get u, and indeed uh, that's what's going to happen. And so similarly here, um, if we look at the analogous picture with r primes, and we replace uh, this map with 0, then we should get u uh, back, which will correspond to uh, u plus 0 is equal to u. Okay, and then what's our multiplication map? The uh, arguably the most confusing map to describe. Um, well, what should this look like? Uh, I could write this as k adjoin x tensor k adjoin y. It's just why I rename the second variable. And this will be isomorphic to k adjoin x comma y. And um, similar to this diagram, we have a map from k x y to a, which uh, sends 
x to some element a, y to some element b, and we want that um, take kx to this guy uh, by our map m, then this should send x to the element a plus b. And you can verify that the right thing to do for m is that m of x is equal to x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor y. And so maybe uh, this makes it a bit more explicit on what, to, what, what these maps generally look like. You should treat this uh, first factor as being like your first variable and the second factor as being your second variable. And then this map sort of represents uh, what the group uh, rule will look like. So here it's saying x times 1 plus 1 times y is equal to x plus y. And so that's uh, why we define a multiplication map as this. Um, so this is pretty cool because um, we can now define our units as being like uh, homomorphisms from this algebra into an arbitrary algebra A. And then these maps, which are special maps associated to this ring, um, induce the fact that this is a group for any ring A that we choose. Um, so these, so, so as I said, this is sort of like thinking about some sort of a universal group living over G, right? And these are some sort of universal laws, uh, some universal like inversion unit and multiplication rules living over this group scheme, which induce um, the uh, like inversion unit and multiplication laws on uh, the set of maps. Um, and the main takeaway here is uh, you should not think about uh, being able to like multiply um, elements of the groups, the underlying set of your scheme together. Instead, you should think about multi being able to multiply points um, in the sense of like the functor of points, if you've heard of that, which is essentially looking at maps from some other scheme to G. Yep. So um, it, another way to talk about this is like uh, here I said like, oh, if you have spec of a field and that corresponds to like some individual point over here. But if you don't have speculative field, then what you're really doing is like you have this space, which is GM, and then you have like some space, which is spec A, and you're considering maps from spec A to GM, which will like correspond to like uh, some sort of a copy of spec A inside GM. And then it says that you can like sort of multiply such maps together. So if you have like two such maps together, then you should be able to get a third such map. And uh, this may seem a bit uh, strange, but another context in which this comes up is let's say that you have a Lie group G. So what we can do is we can look at the set of maps from the unit interval to G. And for example, let's say that this is our picture of G. Um, let's say that we have like this the identity element over here. And this is like one such map, which I'll call alpha. And this is another such map, which I'll call beta. And what we can do is we can pointwise multiply these guys, right? So you multiply this point by this point, this point by this point, this point by this point. And then what we'll get is another map from 0, 1 to G, which corresponds to this, I'll call it alpha times beta. And moreover, we have a special map from 0, 1 to G, which sends every point of 0, 1 to A and D. And you can verify that if you multiply that map pointwise with this map alpha, then you'll get the map alpha back. And you can also have another thing where if you have a map from the path to G, then um, the, uh, you, you can have a, another path from a path to G, uh, which is alpha inverse, which like this is the inverse of this point, this is the inverse of this point, this is the inverse of this point. Um, and so we see that the fact that G is a group in the literal sense and like you can multiply points together um, induces a group structure on the set of maps from a path to G. And more generally, you can see that the same thing holds with the set of maps from any topological space to G. And so in this uh, scheme land, essentially all we're saying is that um, rather than um, having a literal group structure on the set of elements G or like here GM or whatever group scheme you're working with, uh, instead we want to induce a group structure on this set of maps from x to g, which turns out to be doable. OK, um, so before I start talking about the next thing, which is really cool, I want to um, mention a little bit what happens if we're working with schemes over some arbitrary scheme y. Okay.
So, um, I guess uh, I should say that uh, the way that I defined GM um, was really like GM over some K, but GM over some scheme Y uh, it should be equal to spec of z adjoin x x inverse uh, cross y. Um, and so you can verify that um, similar to the previous scenario, if you have some other y scheme x, then um, the maps which look like this uh, and commute down to y um, should give you some group. Um, which can be thought of as the group of units on, I think, probably the global sections of the structure sheaf of, on X, uh, maybe relative to Y or something like that. And one way that you can think about this is that um, you have some space Y down here, right? This is your base scheme. And then you can think of a GM Y or some group scheme lying over Y as sort of being a parameterized set of group schemes. Uh, for every point in Y. And by point in Y, I mean a map from spec K uh, into Y. And so what I mean by that is that you can base chain GMY to um, the thing that we just talked about by tensoring this further with spec K. And then you'll get a copy of um, this guy that we just looked at in detail. And so if you're working over a general scheme, you can think of it as like a parameterized families of these uh, GMKs. Um, and so the identity morphism will correspond to a map from Y to GMY. And you can think about this as a section of this projection down here, um, which picks out the identity element in each fiber. And similarly, like uh, the multiplication should be relative to Y. So you should think about it as like multiplying uh, fibers together and uh, whatnot. Um, yeah, so that's all I want to say about a uh, more general relative case. Now I'm going to go back to K algebras. And what I want to talk about now is group actions. Okay, so what are, group use, what are groups useful for? Um, probably the first time you learned about groups, like dihedral groups or general linear groups or whatever. Uh, you define them as being uh, things which act on other things. And then as you refine your definitions, you sort of came up with a more abstract definition of group. And then you said, okay, uh, the way that a group acts on something else is uh, formalized in what we'll call a group action. Um, and a group action in the standard sense of the word is you take some group G, you multiply it by some set A, and then uh, you map it to some set A. And what this is to say is that for any element G in here, uh, you get a map, I guess I'll call it phi G or whatever, um, which goes from A to A, which corresponds to like some action of uh, G on A. So send some element A over here to uh, some element G times A over here. Um, and so based on, so sort of these are different ways of seeing it, right? So like this is saying that, okay, so for every element and for every group element, you get some uh, action from the group element. This is saying that fix some group element, then you get a map from the set A to itself. And this is like the sort of biggest picture way of talking about group action, which is say, take the product of the group with your set and then you get a map down to your set, which satisfies some compatibility, like the identity doesn't do anything, it's associative, quote unquote, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so um, it, it turns out that we can uh, generalize uh, this uh, statement into the algebraic geometry setting of group schemes. And I'll show later how this recovers for us uh, something which looks a lot like this. Okay, so in language group schemes, uh, we want to find a map, and I'll go back to a GM here. So we want to find a map from GM cross, again, I'll just be working over affine schemes for simplicity, um, GM cross spec A to spec A, which should satisfy uh, some conditions with uh, like the three maps that we have just defined by saying like, oh, the unit shouldn't do anything, inverses should have, like inverses multiplications should um, the associative in the proper sense and uh, whatnot. Um, but instead of like going into the details of that, I'll just sort of uh, follow my nose and see what has to go on here. So this will correspond to some map from A to 
a answer over k of k adjoin x comma x inverse okay and so because essentially uh, a is a k algebra so tensing over k will essentially kill out uh, this k and the only thing that we really care about is this x and x inverse so we can rewrite this as a direct sum of a uh, tensor um, x to the n or if you would like some copy of k times x to the n uh, for n in the integers, right? So th this is a direct sum as uh, k modules, k vector spaces, whatever. Um, but yeah, so, so we have a map from A into this uh, direct sum of modules. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll define a n um, to be the image of A under uh, this map. I guess I'll call this um, map alpha, and by abuse, I'll call this map alpha as well. Um, and will be the image of under alpha of this map intersect um, the nth uh, direct sum end. So intersect a tensor a times x to the n. And so what that means is that we have a map from a to the direct sum of a sub n uh, tensor k x to the n for n in z. Um, but then because like really this is a one-dimensional vector space, right? So this can kind of like be eaten up um, into the k structure of this. And then as modules, um, this is really just the same as the sum over uh, n in z of a n. So we have a map from a to the sum a n. And I claim that the compatibility with uh, gm um, will actually make this data uh into a grading on a um so that is to say that an action of gm acting on spec a is equivalent to making a from like upgrading a from just a k algebra into a graded k algebra okay so why is this so well uh remember that we have a map uh from spec a to gm which was a map from uh, which remember i called like spec r um, where r is k x x inverse. Um, so th this will be a map from r to k. And what we can do is we can uh, take a tensor r uh, to a tensor k. And this will be our direct sum of a tensor k z to the n. And we have a map from a to here. And then a tensor k, well, a is a k algebra, so this is just canonically identified with a. And uh, you can check the details if you want, but essentially uh, saying that this identity map doesn't do anything on the action should correspond to saying that this long composite map uh, from a to a uh, should be the identity morphism. Or in other words, um, if we have a map from a to uh, this uh, direct sum of a n, then uh, this uh, map induces a splitting, or I guess maybe a splitting if you want to call it like that, a uh, map from this sum back to A. So what this says is that as modules, this is equal to A. Furthermore, um, this map uh, is a map that comes from a map of schemes. And so what that means is that it should um, be an algebra homomorphism. Okay. So let's say that A um, gets mapped to A n and B gets mapped to um, A m. So in other words, uh, A will be mapped to A tensor Z to the n and B will be mapped to B tensor Z to the m. So where does A B get sent to? Uh, well, it'll get sent to A B tensor Z to the m times Z to the n. Um, or a b tensor uh, oh sorry I'm using z here I should use x uh, x x x x uh, x to the m plus n and so that means is that a b will be sent to the piece a sub m plus n so um, what we've just done is we've decomposed our algebra a into a direct sum of 
uh, graded pieces a sub n, um, which satisfies that a sub n times a sub m lies inside the graded piece a sub m n. And this, these, uh, this equality and uh, this condition is equivalent to saying that a is equal to direct sum of a sub n for n and z uh, makes a into a z graded algebra. Uh, so as I said earlier, uh, I want to make this as sort of a prequel to um, a video on the prod construction. Um, and maybe you can sort of start and see where uh, the prod stuff uh, starts to play in here. OK, so now we've seen that um, giving a GM action um, on the affine scheme spec A is equivalent to endowing the scheme A with a grading. And uh, conversely, if you have a grading on a spec uh, on the algebra A like this, then you can uh, make this identification and see that a grading on an algebra of A uh, gives an action of GM on spec A. So then we see that um, Z gradings on A are in one-to-one -one correspondence with actions of GM. And this is like quite a special relationship. Um, and it's kind of analogous to how uh, functions from spec A to GM were in one-to-one -one correspondence with the units of A. Um, and so, I mean, another thing to note here is that um, choose like a different grading, uh, then it'll induce a different uh, action of GM on spec A. So uh, now that we have this sort of map, we can sort of try and ask like, uh, how does this agree with what we think of an action as like taking a group element and actually acting on uh, the space. So um, what we usually think of as a group action is you have some element u in your group, and then you get some map of phi u from your space x to uh, itself. Um, and that is your group, uh, group element acting on your space. And that's uh, what I've written down here. Um, and here we're going to take x to be our space spec A, which has uh, some grading on it. Okay, um, so how can you realize this in this setting? Well, so if you want a unit, what we can do is we can look for a unit in k star. And remember, what do I mean by a, a unit in k star? Well, over here, what I mean is um, the set of maps from um, spec k to gm. As we've seen, uh, a unit here, it, these maps are one one corresponds with the units, uh, where this uh, is equal to spec r, and this takes uh, x to your unit u. Um, and from this, I'm going to construct a map from spec a to itself. And how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to note that spec a, because we're working uh, over uh, k schemes, uh, this is going to be the same as spec k times spec a. And remember, that's because we're taking things relative to spec k, and uh, a is a k algebra. And then we can uh, include this uh, using the map u cross identity into gm cross spec a. Um, so what does that mean? Well, um, we can apply the map u on the first factor and the identity on the second factor. And what I mean by the, the map u is taking the map over here, which corresponds to the unit u, um, and then compose this using the action map alpha that we have here um, to get back to spec a. And this gives us a map from spec a to spec a. And now we can try and analyze this a bit more explicitly. So, uh, dualizing and working in algebra land, uh, we see that this is the same as a map from A to A tensor over K of K X X inverse. Um, and this goes to K um, tensor over K A. Um, and this will send the element X to the element U. And this will be isomorphic to A. Okay. So what is this doing? Well, this is sending A 
to the direct sum of a sub n x to the n. And then this is sending x to u, so this will be sent to the direct sum of a sub n u to the n. And then um, this just maps to a. Um, because uh, u to the n is an element of k cross. And so because k cross acts on uh, each of these modules, um, we get that uh, multiplying a n times u to the n is just like a permutation of the elements of a n. And so this has a map back to a. Um, so we can analyze this a bit more explicitly in some special examples. So let's say that a is equal to k adjoin x, uh, so that x is equal to spec a will just be the line. Um, and let's pick some maximum ideal over here. Uh, so let's call that x minus a. Um, and let's re rescale this by the unit u and see what happens. So we have x minus a over here. And this gets sent to uh, u x minus a because, um, oh yeah, so I have to include some grading on this, right, in order to endow the GM action on it. And I'm going to choose the standard grading where x has a uh, degree 1 and k has degree 0. Um, and then because x has degree 1, it gets sent to ux. a is in k, so it has degree 0, so it gets just sent, sent to a. Um, and then because we're just talking ideals, we can rescale by unit, and then this gets sent to x minus u inverse a. Um, so what that means is that this point a uh, corresponds to this point u inverse a. You might think that this might be going in the wrong direction because uh, we want to send a to u times a because that's what it should mean by multiplication by u. Um, but in fact, uh, this is the right thing because um, what this is is it's uh, the map of ideals uh, between the rings. And what that means is it's the pullback of functions uh, from the image spec A to the domain spec A. And um, what that means is that the functions on over here on the right side, after the action, which vanished on x minus A, um, in the pre-image vanished on x minus U inverse A. And that is to say that if we instead look at x minus A U, and we pull that back, then this will um, pull back to x minus a. So this lives in the original spec a before the action happened. And then this lives in the image spec a after the action happened. So what that shows is that the uh, ideal x minus a, which corresponds to um, the point a um, in spec kx, uh, will get sent to x minus a u um, in spec kx. And so we see that the multiplication by u actually um, acts as we expect it to. Another example that we can take is we can take a is equal to k join x y, and we can so that this will correspond to like you know a two dimensional uh, plane, and we can look at the ideal y minus x squared, and then we can ask okay so what should happen if we multiply this by negative one? Well, it should come from um, this uh, flipped parabola, right? So if you look at the ideals, then what happens is we have y minus x squared. And then what should this be sent to? Well, again, we need to choose a grading on here. So I'll again choose a standard grading where a uh, degree of x equals degree of y equals 1, and the degree of anything in k is equal to 0. So this has degree 1. This has degree um, 2. And so let's multiply this by minus 1. And so what will happen is that y gets sent to minus y, and x gets sent to, uh, or x squared gets sent to negative 1 squared times x squared, so it'll be minus x squared. And because we're working in ideals, this is the same as y plus x squared, which does correspond to this parabola. So this says that y plus x squared, which lies in the domain spec A, which is a upside down parabola, after you multiply that by negative 1, it'll be sent to this right side up parabola. So we can see that surprisingly, like, or maybe not surprisingly, hopefully not surprisingly, uh, this map that we sort of abstractly defined as being the group action actually does act as we expect it to, in that we can take uh, some group scene with a GM action, that is some algebra A with a grading, and act on it by uh, functions, uh, sorry, act on it by uh, units of k. And that sort of corresponds to scaling the points as we expect it to geometrically. Yeah, well, one last point that we can talk about is um, we can sort of uh, reinterpret what this grading is telling us. Um, so I think what's going on is actually something sort of representation theoretic, where um, if you're given an action of GM on spec A, then we see that like for every element of GM, quote unquote, what I mean is like any element in the unit group of K, which is given by such a map, um, we get an automorphism of spec A. And from this automorphism, we can pull back functions on spec A. And so what we get is that um, like the, the universal group over GM 
acts on the uh, functions of spec A. And so spec A, or sorry, uh, yeah, and the function of spec A is just the ring A. And so the ring A should decompose into a sum of irreducible representations of um, this action. And so we can see that um, U acting on A N, um, which is like a, some module of functions, it acts on this by taking U to the N A N. And so this sort of corresponds to like the nth power character. Um, and so I think uh, what this is saying is that uh, in many ways, GM is similar to S1 or the group U1 um, in topology, uh, which is the unique compact one dimensional group. And so for example, like you have um, Pontryagin duality over here and something analogous called Cartier duality over here, if you know what that is. Um, and the representations over here, um, you essentially have one dimensional representations of S1, and that corresponds to acting by U to the N on C. Um, and over here, similarly, this sort of shows us that we only have one dimensional representations. So um, I think if you take like some other group and you sort of look at uh, what happens to uh, this tensor product over here, um, I think it'll sort of decompose into uh, something corresponding to the representations. And over here, like the fact that it's a grading means that when you take the product of um, two different representations, that'll correspond to the tensor product of the representations. And the fact that a tensor product is irreducible sort of means that it'll take you to a unique other graded element. But if the tensor product of two representations is not irreducible, then um, it might be something more complicated with gradings. Um, so maybe some things that you can explore are like looking at some other um, examples of group schemes. So you can look at uh, GA, which I hinted at already, um, what some of the, the, what the scheme itself and some of the maps should be. Uh, you can also try and look at what the group schemes corresponding to SL2 and GL2 should be. Um, so as a hint, like what does the data, so, so first you should start off by like figuring out um, what is the scheme that corresponds to these guys. And then you should figure out uh, what are the maps that correspond to them. So in order to do that, you should figure out like, okay, what is the data of a two by two matrix, um, which is invertible over some ring? Um, and how can I find some ring which represents that? Um, similar to like k join x or k join x, x inverse. Uh, and similar for SL2. And then you can try and figure out, okay, what does the identity mean? What does the multiplication mean? And so on and so forth. And then you can try and see if you can do some similar stuff about multiplication. I'm not sure if you get a nice decomposition like this in general, because um, I haven't worked it out yet, but that could be something interesting to look at. Um, so I hope uh, this was interesting and that you at least got something out of it, but that's all I wanted to say for this video.